Friends, lovers, enemies, other people with AITA podcasts. <laughs> I hope you are all doing swimmingly. Yeah, people, I'm gonna drop it. I think it's still summer. I think I can still fly a swimmingly. It's not illegal, people. Guys, this is the call-in show. I'm gonna slap a very, very moderate TW on this puppy. Um, why? Because I'm paranoid. I live in a state of constant neurotic anxiety. I just, I think I ventured off on some tangents where I am not qualified to speak. So really probably less of a trigger and more of a like, does Danny really have a right to opine on this matter? Nonetheless, I'm throwing it on there because I'm making an effort to be conscious. Now, this is the call-in show, people, and it's a lot of fun, and we love to do this. And you could be on the call-in show if you wanted uh, by joining our Patreon, patreon.com slash A-I-T-A pod. Or you could keep doing what you're doing and listening to the apps, which we really appreciate. And if you want to give back and just show me a little bit of love, I always appreciate it. You could throw a little rate, review, subscribe on the old iTunes, Spotify, whatever podcast platform you use. I'd really appreciate it. And a big shout out. We will be covering more UPS hate. I am loving the UPS hate I am getting from you people. It is a delight and a half. Much like you are gems and a half. And here is the Colin Ep. We welcome Ellie to the Colin Show. Ellie, you've been here before. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Well, you know, I'm not great, but Sarah's sick of hearing about my sickness. So we're, we're not going to go into it again. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, sometimes life throws us challenges, but you know, life threw you a real challenge. And and I, I think this is a little ridiculous. I'm actually really excited to get into this because we're getting off AITA town. Well, Sarah gave you an AITA title. She yeah, wrote if we AITA, wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> AITA for telling people to leave your curtains open if you struggle waking up in the morning. Now, you posted this on a different subreddit, the Life Pro Tip subreddit. And yes. the title you wrote was, if you struggle with waking up in the morning, leave your curtain slash blinds open before you go to sleep. Yes. I wonder so out of the yeah. safe spot. <laughs> Why? I mean, are you a regular LPT or is this a sort of a first time thing for you? What brought you to make this submish? Well, it's a subreddit that I've been sort of subscribed to. And like some of the tips I know can be pretty hit or miss there. But um, I mean, I've gotten some that are pretty interesting. Um, yeah. I think I have posted there once before about like, hey, did you know that reusable makeup wipes are a thing and they work really well and you don't have to scrub your face? But like, yeah, and a ton of, I mean, like it didn't get very much traction, but a couple of people were like, oh, hey, I'd never heard of this. So I was like, that's cool. Um, I just feel like, yeah, those those things where like you find out something that works and you want to be like, hey, other people might have the same problem and I want to tell them, mm -hmm. uh, which is what led me to making that post today because a friend of mine had just been asking, like, I'm having so much trouble sleeping or getting up in the morning. Um, like, do you have any solutions? And I have like the worst time in the world waking up. Like, it doesn't matter how early I go to sleep. When I have to right. wake up to an alarm, I'm just miserable. And the only thing that I've actually found that helps that is just leaving my curtains open, um, which I started doing in grad school. And I just found waking up, no matter how early it was, just got so much easier. Like, even if I woke up to an alarm, I wasn't just like, I want to die. I want to go back to sleep. I, you know, I don't, first, I don't know what it is. The sun seems to just like make it easier to get out of bed well that's how that's the original alarm clock shout out to the big daddy up there the sun still killing it um you wrote as someone who stays way up way too late this is the easiest method i've found to not feel like garbage when i wake up because sunrise tends to wake you up gradually as far as i know this even works if you have to wake up to an alarm i couldn't agree more i think this is a very valid life pro tip i think it's a little obvious if yeah i come at you that's yeah. it <laughs> i mean I'm, it's kind of like life pro tip have you all heard of the sun <laughs> you know right? but you'd think it was common sense but according to the responses i got in there i was Apparently, this is not only not common sense, it's extremely bad and you should not do it and you should not tell people to do it. Yeah. Which like, was like, I don't because like, that's the thing is like, I know most people know that the sun is like good for waking up. Like, I mean, there's like sun lamps that like imitate yeah. the sun coming up. Um, right. But the actual leaving your curtains open is not a thing that I think most people think to do just because part of your night routine is closing your curtains before you go to bed. Right. And like, I've told it, like, I've got a few friends who like started doing it and they were like, oh yeah, like I get it now. 
it does actually make a difference. Okay, so yeah, let's get into some of these objections. NNK 1996 writes, I'm sorry, but this should belong in shitty life pro tips. For people in the city, this would wreck their sleeps. I bought curtains that are heavy with double the layers just to stop the jarring red lights from affecting my sleep. Add to the fact that noise becomes an issue and this is insomnia waiting to happen. Yeah, I'm kind of like... As someone who lived in Manhattan, fair enough, but like not really, this is not true in Brooklyn. I could totally do this where I live in Williamsburg, which is not like the middle of nowhere. Like, I just feel like this objection is very narrow. That's and it's my also thing. Like, oh, oh no, sorry. Go ahead, I was going to say like, I'm sorry, but also um, like I have heavy curtains. I have like insomnia and, and a ton of like sensitivity. Like I have to be in a silent cave when I'm sleeping, but that said, leaving my curtains open or closed has literally no effect on the noise level. Like, the window? Hell yeah. But opening my curtains is not gonna do anything for, like, the fucking sirens outside. This, people's, this person is being dramatic. Yeah, that's my thing. And, like, I don't know. I, I realized this because I was like, okay, because, like, one comment was, okay, maybe, like, some people are just being annoying. But then, like, I just saw, like, tons of the comments being... Actually, I posted it, went, started my work day and forgot about it and then came back and the first comment I saw was y'all are salty, like this actually is not a bad tip and I was like, oh no, and I looked at the rest of the um, responses and like just a ton of them were like these really specific examples of like why this wouldn't work and I was like, I wasn't saying everyone should do this 100%, I was like if this is a thing you struggle with, try this out because it worked for me and maybe it will work for you, but I kept getting all these things of like, you're going to let tell people that you're ready to be robbed and I'm like Maybe everyone on the subreddit sleeps yeah. with their bed right next to the window. Like, I don't know. No. Cockeyed Scripper. This is insane. Cockeyed Scripper wrote, yes, make it abundantly clear to potential Roberts and perverts that you are asleep in your home. This is especially wise for single women who live by themselves. Okay, relax. Like, it's nighttime. Most criminals are going to assume that you are asleep in your home, especially if the lights are off. That's exactly... I mean, okay, here's my, here's my confession and where I... Will one hundred percent own up to being an asshole? I definitely responded to some of these comments because I was like, "This is so stupid. Oh, You're stupid. Boy. I want to fight with you." I saw that. I saw that. I was going to include it, but like, you know. Oh, we're going to read your. We're going to read your petty comment. So you responded to the potential Roberts and perverts comment. You said, I'm pretty sure by virtue of having your lights off and it being late in the night, most people will assume you're asleep. LOL. People, if people sleep right next to their window, I'd assume they'd have the common sense to factor that into how helpful this is without having to be told to. But apparently some of y'all treat the posts here like they're prescriptive. Yeah, that was me just getting really salty at like <laughs> one o'clock in the afternoon. I, I will say, look, I, I have done this. Um, I think it's uh, toxic. Uh, you know, I don't blame you for to, like, doing get it. into internet fights. That's why I never read the comments. That's why I it's don't fucking, post on Reddit. I'm soft as a, fuck, you guys. It's a waste of everyone's time, including yeah. your own and especially your own. It's like these. First of all, anyone who comments on anything is a fucking loser. What are you fucking <laughs> commenting on? Who gives a shit? You know, especially when, and like now, I I think in our group it's unique because like yeah, we're trying to have a discussion and actually hear your points. We're literally soliciting your comments, whereas on Reddit you're soliciting attention or like you're saying this is a good tip, upvote it or don't. Mm -hmm. What needs to be said, honestly? It's not you know, a bad I, tip. Like if it, all right, if it's not useful to you, fine. Like move it along, but it's not a dangerous tip. I don't understand. Yeah, some people were really acting like I was like setting people up to get murdered, and I was like, yeah. I feel like most people like understand their own living circumstances. Like I don't know. It was very. I I know. I I definitely am the asshole for responding to comments because that's a waste of time, and I know that. Well, you're the um, asshole to yourself. I don't know yeah. what makes you the asshole. I mean, I honestly like in between, like I was earlier thinking about this because I just feel like there's this part of the internet where people just feel entitled for every single thing to apply to them. And it's extremely annoying. Like I remember when I, I used to write for um, Bustle and I would just write like dumbass listicles or whatever. And it would be like, 23 things people in New York understand. And then I would have someone angrily tweet at me like, oh, I live in New York and I've never done X thing. It's like, okay. <laughs> some some random thing, some, some bullet ha point on a bullshit list doesn't apply to you. Like, what? 
now what? You know, like it's, why? It's why content. Does... So be content. How about that? You hey, I love that. Hey, let me ask you guys a question. How? Uh, what percent of the world do you think lives in in Asia? Don't think, just go. Oh God, um, I know this from your tweet, so I won't answer. Seventy-five. Like I know population is Seven, like incredibly seventy-five. Okay. Maybe 80. Actually, it's like a huge continent. 80? It's 59. But I made a TikTok about this. And I think the spirit of the TikTok was that a a surprisingly high number of people live in Asia. And so many motherfuckers had to come for me. Like they're like, duh, China has the most people. And I'm like, yes, I knew I knew this. I'm I'm just saying, like, isn't it a little apparently not to you, because you think seventy five percent of people live there. See, I'm bad at numbers. I don't know. (laughs) I feel like Americans are just very America centric. That, like anytime yeah, that, someone posts something on Reddit where halfway through the post it becomes clear that they don't live in the US, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just like, I think it's a thing of people online were like, oh, well, I know more than you, so why are you getting attention or something like that? And they feel oh, the yeah, need to take obnoxious. you down a peg. And and mm-hmm. that's why I think it's toxic to get in and talk to these morons because like ultimately they're stupid and they're wasting their own time. And now you're wasting your time hanging out with these fools. That is yeah. that is actually probably very true. I do Big it. Main I'll, character syndrome. Absolutely. I've gotten into it with these people. They make reply TikToks and they're like, actually, it is taught, Danny. You just didn't listen. And I'm like, oh, my God. Were you in you know, school with me sitting next to me in class? Yeah. It's Bless. like, obviously, it was taught. I knew about China and India and shit, motherfucker. But nobody ever just straight up said, like, most people live in Asia. It's like a clean way of saying it. Right. Uh, anyway, no, people no, are honestly so annoying online, but then that's counteracted by the fact that people online can also be so funny. Yeah. So it's, true. it's enough it's true. to keep me coming back to the internet. <laughs> it's true. Nonetheless, I think we agree. AITA for telling people to leave your curtains open if you struggle waking up in the morning. I think we agree, not the asshole in these fucking commenters are. Oh, thank yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. All right. Well, also, you're a grad student, so you're wasting, like, Canada's precious brain power on this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Every time society. someone's like, every time someone's like, you're a grad student, so, like, you must be smart. I'm like, oh, you, I wish you knew. <laughs> All, right. All, right. All right. We're going to do a little situation here. AITA for demanding my mom apologize after she blew up at my girlfriend who she thought was being racist. I'm black, GF is Filipino. My parents aren't the biggest fans just because we come from different socioeconomic backgrounds and they don't think I should be with a rich girl. All right, weird. I feel like you don't hear that often. You don't. You really don't. My parents came over for dinner last night and my girlfriend was going to cook. Neither of us cook very much and we eat way too much takeout. So she decided to make fried chicken because it's something she made with her mom growing up. Her mom came here from the Philippines and I guess it's pretty popular over there. When my mom saw the fried chicken, she thought that my girlfriend was either making fun of her or just going off a racial stereotype. She immediately started cussing at her and demanding an apology. I explained to my mom that fried chicken is popular in the Philippines, and I Googled it to show her that there are a lot of Filipino recipes. She calmed down and didn't apologize. I asked if she was going to apologize, and she said it was just a misunderstanding. I said she should still apologize, and she got offended, so I asked her to leave. I'm not talking to her until she apologized, but I don't know if that is too harsh. The situation is so much. Also, speaking of things that you get into fights about, this yes, is definitely one. That's why I had this chosen this one. This is the only time that I've done this in like recent history, because usually I'm like, okay, just, just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Uh, but yeah, this one, I was just like, this is so ridiculous. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess just going off the situation itself, um, obviously the mom's being an asshole. Like, whatever you thought was true, once you realize you're wrong, you apologize. You don't just be like, well, I was, I might have thought this, so I'm fine. I don't need to apologize. You're being overdramatic. Like, that's very childish. Right. It seems like very standard apology fare. <laughs> like, I was, I reacted based on an incorrect assumption that assumption was proven incorrect therefore i just apologize now yeah like it's not it's not that difficult to just be like yeah you know what i misunderstood this and like that i mean that shows good faith right if you if you genuinely thought that that was what the case was then you would apologize when you realize you're wrong but i don't know i think i can't remember now because it's been so long but i feel like there was also a sense in that 
situation where the mom already kind of had a predisposition against the girlfriend. Mm, well, um, we know we he, they didn't she didn't like her because she's rich. Yeah, which feels like a very that feels like not an actual reason. It feels like that's like the reason she's giving and there's Ooh. like probably I don't this is conspiracy talk, I guess. But it feels <laughs> it feels like the kind of excuse you give when you don't want to say what the actual reason is. Eh, well, yeah, I think the actual reason is that it makes her feel insecure and a- and inadequate and that's why when she sees the fried chicken, she immediately chooses the worst case scenario, mm-hmm. you know, which is ridiculous. Like someone's making food for you. Fried chicken, by the way, like, OK, it's part of a stereotype. It's also quite popular, like universally. I, I don't know that I ever met someone who oh, fried chicken sucks, you know, mm-hmm. it's maybe. like maybe what's that vegans, maybe. Vegans, maybe. I was going to ve- say I, that. <laughs> I, I think a vegan will own it. They'll go, yeah, no, it's very good. I understand. I find it morally reprehensible, <laughs> but I understand it. It's like, the, and and honestly, this ties into the first thing, too. It's like, give charity, uh, and not in the sense of donating your money to Salvation Army, but like, assume the best in people. Like, assume the best intentions. It's like, you might as well, because if they're being a motherfucker and a piece of shit, you'll find out soon enough. So you might as well just assume the best about them and assume that this is relevant to someone or good for someone in the case of your little life pro tip. It's like, why do you feel the need to take this in the worst way possible? Yeah, that's my thing. It's like, that's what that's why I'm like, OK, she clearly I mean, obviously, the even the OP said she already doesn't like the girlfriend. So she's just looking for like a fight probably even if it's subconsciously so when she sees this she's like here it is here's the proof that i was waiting for this girl's a piece of shit like let's fight yeah it seems like there was i I don't know i feel like that to go in to i don't know to blow up that quickly i feel like there was already something kind of bubbling underneath the surface and this was just the opportunity that i feel like you're probably right about that Sarah M writes, give your mom a full minute. When you have kids that are your entire heart and you worry they might be in a situation of abuse, then you can judge her, demand apologies from her. Where's the grace and understanding from you and your girlfriend? I would move on and never uh, mention this again until you have grown up. What? Oh, this kids, is so confusing. And I mean, Lord forbid a similar misunderstanding happens and you can tell them about it so they can learn and grow as you and your girlfriend did. What? Um, I mean, maybe this person's also in conspiracy town because, like, I guess yeah. they've taken it to mean that the mom suspects abuse. Yeah, I know why. I don't know. I think there's certain people who don't understand apologizing and they think that, like, a mother or any authoritarian, like, shouldn't have to apologize or they don't need to apologize. And it's like, no, any mature person is like, I'm a fucking idiot a lot of the time. It doesn't matter if you're 30 or 50 or 70 or 12. You fuck up. And you say, hey, I fucked up. I It was mean what I did. And that's it. And then it's over. Yeah. Right. And like, I, I feel, mean, it's still, yeah. no, sorry, keep going. Well, I feel like that's what they're getting on about. It's like, why should she have to apologize? And it's like, well, she has to apologize because what she did was rude and mean. It, 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 sorry, it was it was rude and it was a mean behavior. And it doesn't make this is, I think, a mistake people get caught on is they think, Oh, well, if I admit to doing something, which was clearly a mistake, I had good intentions. That must mean I'm a bad person. It's like, no, it's a bad person when you won't apologize. That's what makes you a bad person. Not the fact that you accidentally fucked up or you, you know, you came in with a bias and you saw the worst in the fried chicken or whatever it may be. That doesn't make you that bad of a person. That's a mistake anyone could make. Mm-hmm. Right. Or like if you keep apologizing for stuff and then you keep doing the same thing over and over <laughs> like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also. Yes. Bad. And like, I feel like you've talked about this, too, about how, like, as a parent, you have a different set of responsibilities than the other person. Like this is you're supposed to be the adult. I mean, not the adult, but like the parent here. Yeah. Like you're. Yes. You should be the one modeling like the good behavior and not, you know, if you do fly off. Fair enough. Fly off the handle. Some people like, you know. If she already thinks this girl's terrible and she thinks that this is a slight against her, maybe she really did, you know, overreact and she didn't think that it was out of line. But once you realize that it was, you can't just like try to pretend that that didn't happen. Exactly. Yeah. Eva like, I don't know. Would- I feel like my most generous interpretation is like the mom is really mortified and that's why she's 
doubling down on not apologizing and wants everyone to just blow over it. Yeah. But still, just you just say sorry and then it you know, it's over. Mm-hmm. Makita, D, NTA for thinking it's racist. Honestly, there are so many microaggressions out here, it's easy to jump the gun. Big YTA for her not apologizing. She should most def apologize, explain why she felt that way, and ask for forgiveness. I mean, I do think it's like, okay, look, I understand. Like, if she had shown up and it was like a list of stereotypes, uh, then I guess. But even then, I'm kind of like, all right, if you're really going to look at someone giving you food as an as a microaggression, like I, I, I get that and you have a right to kind of like note it, but like you really going to call them out? Like I feel like if they truly are racist and shitty, like it'll come out more explicitly at some point. You shouldn't really be mad at someone for Yeah, but you I don't food. think you want to wait around for it to come out more explicitly. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, there are people who like they'll always just do it in these really subtle ways and like if you're just waiting for it to be like this really open I don't know, well, like saying, instance of racism or horribleness, like you might not, you might be waiting a while. Well, okay, but yeah, but if you're waiting a while, isn't that good? I mean, like no. as a Cuban, if I went to some, you know, person's house and they were like clearly trying to play that up, they're like Cafe Cubano or whatever, all these fucking things. I would be like, this is a little weird, but I wouldn't be like, oh, you know, this is a, fe-. and I know it's not the same being Cuban as being <laughs> black, but I'm just saying, you know, is that really something that's worth like, attacking you know if they really do have like an ignorant intention or a negative intention Mm -hmm. that will come out in a way that is more worthy of being called out like because that's what somebody else wrote this by the way that watermelon is very popular in philip in the philippines as well and it's like Mm -hmm. if you show up to the fucking (laughs) stereotype buffet you know it's just i think it's it's kind of like well yeah go ahead I, I just, I mean, I don't agree. Like, if someone's uncomfortable with what they perceive to be a microaggression, also, like, I'm going to go ahead and say I don't have any experience experiencing them. Um, sure. But I don't think that they should have to wait until they feel potentially incrementally or exponentially more uncomfortable to say something. If they are feeling, you know, like, uncomfortable and they feel confident enough to say something, then they should. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think you should just wait it out to see. That's like almost self gaslighting no, no. when like sorry, something sorry. slightly not... bad is happening to you, and you're like, I can't tell if this is bad, so I'm gonna like wait to see if it gets worse. Well, no, okay. I'll, let me let me let me reorient myself. You don't need to wait. I I was trying to say, don't assume the worst. You know, like pointing it out or whatever. If you feel the need to address it right away, you're uncomfortable. Fine, but I'm saying. Don't assume that because someone does make the stereotype of Faye that they're automatically a shitty racist person. They might just be stupid and they're working off stereotypes and that's ignorant. But it's like, why are you going to come for them about that? You know, they're they are still serving you food like it's not there's there's kind of good intent there. That That's all I'm saying. I guess I can see where you're coming from there about how like you can't the only thing is, though, especially because it's like a personal interaction, like at the end of the day if it's like a microaggression and you're just like not in the mood for it, I feel like you're still valid in being like, I don't even want to have to deal with this. Cause like, I mean, you could always, if you really like were in the mood to, you know, question it and be like, Hey, like what's the deal with this. But if you're meeting someone and you're like, this person seems to just not get it. Like, I don't want to have to sit here and explain, you know, I mean like that Cubans don't do X, Y, Z thing. I feel like that's a valid thing to do, but also, like, yeah, the thing about, like, it being a microaggression, just in general, like, the thing is, like, a lot of people know what not to say. And so, like, but you'll see their attitude come out in those microaggressions, which, like, again, not to say that as soon as someone does that, you can immediately be like, ah, yes, terrible person, racist. But it is, like, sort of indicative because a person who kind of understands you better would not, would at least be conscious enough of not doing that sometimes, if that makes sense. Yeah, no. And look, and I'm not telling anyone what to do. I recognize I'm not in a in a position to do that. I guess I just believe that I can at least imagine a scenario. I mean, look, I when I go farther with it and make the whole stereotype of Faye, I'm like, then it starts to seem like catering and it might be it might play as ignorant or racist. But I'm like, so so say she made fried chicken and like collard greens and like a, you know, a southern kind of meal. You know, and it's like, well, one way you could take that is like, oh, you think you think this and that about black people. And the other way is you could be like, oh, well, she, you know, she's trying to cater to you and like make you food that she thought you would like. So it's like, 
even assuming it's an aggression at all, I just think can be kind of a non-charitable way to approach it. I, I know that I'm sure, obviously, there's mm-hmm. a million ways this could come out where you would know that this is hostile or at least indicative of something more negative. But that's, yeah. that's my only point. I mean, I, I can I can even imagine that in my own like sort of situation. Like I'm South Asian and I can... I feel like I've probably experienced this and I just can't remember because that's how much it doesn't ping to me. But like, you know, people being like, oh, yes, I love X, Y, Z thing that you must also know about because you're South Asian. And like there are certain situations where like you can kind of give people grace and say like, oh, this is a person who's trying to connect. And like, obviously, in this situation, the mom in the story is not interested at all in giving like the charitable reading to anything. And like maybe she's justified in that maybe she's not I don't know but like her behavior regardless like if you're coming over for dinner presumably you're trying to form some sort of relationship with these people yes yes I think you nailed that it's like sensing the gap between an ignorant thing uh you know that's thrown hostily or thrown in a way to be reductive and on an earnest thing to connect that might play as kind of clumsy like you know like Oh, what, you know, what country are you from specifically? Or, you know, the classic, like, where are you from? And you're like, I'm from Canada, you fuck face. But it's like, <laughs> you know that I'm just curious what nation you're associated with. I'm not I'm not trying to come for you, you know, and, and I just think and I and I don't even think this is a prevalent thing, but I, I'm just trying to tie this into the first situation of like just kind of assuming the best intent is, I think, usually a kind of a better way to approach situations. Yeah, because I feel like you're also a lot more likely to get explanations for something that feels off if you're coming at it like charitably i mean again like some people will probably be a little bit more even-headed and able to be like hey no this is what i meant but some people when you respond with like anger can sometimes just like respond badly back and that's maybe not a great thing for them to do but totally it's probably like a lot of people's tendency so if you're trying to form some sort of positive relationship it's probably i know better to just approach things with like a little bit of grace a little bit of grace. I think we agree on this one. I think it's a no-brainer. Mom came in. She was looking to pick a fight, and then she had no basis on which to pick. AATA for demanding my mom apologize after she blew up at my girlfriend who she thought was being racist. I think we agree. Not the asshole and the mother is. I think we do, too. Mm-hmm. Well, Ellie, it's been great to have you on the pod once again. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, thank you for having me. We welcome Hannah from Australia to the call-in show. Hannah, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Sorry, I can't understand you because everything you're saying is upside down. <laughs> People, Australia jokes. Now, but Hannah, I'm, I'm very curious. I mean, we, we all know some of the more stupid, you know, aspects of how Australia is different. I mean, some are incredible. Like you can punch a kangaroo in the face and the <laughs> kangaroos are pests. I personally enjoy that. But I'm curious, is there any deeper cultural difference between the Aussies and the U.S.? I mean, are people, is there a different vibe out there? Um, yeah, I think we're a little more like Britain or England um, mm-hmm. in that I think we all kind of like to take the piss out of ourselves a lot. Like that's kind of our default is to just, uh, yeah, to, to um, really make a joke out of yourself before anybody else can. Love so that. the self-defeating humor is part of it. Whereas America is more like America, fuck yeah. Australia is more like Australia, we suck. Sort of, yeah. I mean, we, we kind of mm-hmm. do the thing of like, oh, we're, we're the most beautiful country. We're the greatest country. Full of dickheads, though. <laughs> that kind of tends yeah, to be the, Yeah. <laughs> And and there are some some sites I know, right? There's the Great Barrier Reef, but I've been told mm-hmm. the Great Barrier Reef is dying. Yes, yeah. Um, this is a bit political. Um, uh, our governments political. aren't fantastic, and they keep selling off a lot of uh, space to like fracking and oil and gas companies, and they're like pumping stuff into the ocean that's slowly killing it off, as well as then climate change on top of that. So it's yeah, unfortunately, it is it is a really big shame. It's it's just such a beautiful. I've, been twice to see it. It's so stunning. It's so beautiful. And it's, yeah, it's really devastating that it's being killed off slowly. You hate to hear it. That's morbid. (laughs) Um, Then we've got the kangaroos. We've got the outback. And I will say, actually, the only building I think I can name in Australia is, of course, the Sydney Opera House. Very Mm -hmm. famous. I'm not sure why. I guess because it's just so pretty. I think we've, Sarah, you've heard of the Sydney Opera House, right? Yeah, I feel like I did a project on it in like middle school. Don't ask me why. (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't know why. Yeah. Why? Like, do you do you know why? What's so great about the Sydney Opera House, Hannah? 
I'm going to be honest, I've not actually been to Sydney. Um, it's Really? I, I, yeah. Um, I do know that it was designed by someone very famous and I am aware that it, the way that it has been designed is one of the, um, apparently one of like the smartest ways that you can design a, um, like a stage, like for, for shows and that. So like mm. the noise travels fantastically and it's just apparently really beautiful inside. inside sorry. Yeah. Fascinating. That's cool. Okay. Here's here's another aspect of Australian culture. I've heard this about the Brits as well. So this is really lining up with what you're saying. But in America, the C word is rather <laughs> nuclear. Yes. I would say approaching slur territory. Sarah, would you go with me on that? It's kind of a slur. I think you could call it that. I think yeah. you could call it that. But yeah. in Australia, y'all love to say the C word. Is Or is that true? Uh, yeah, uh, so it's probably about 50 50. Um, mm. uh, some people, my mother, for example, flips her lid every time I say it. I do say it quite a lot. I used to work in hospitality with chefs, and so I'm very, oh. um, very just, it doesn't even impact me at all. Um, and uh, the thing that we do out here is if um, you want to insult somebody, you call them your mm. mate. And if you want to call somebody your friend, you call them the C word. <laughs> I think I'm a little Australian based on that. <laughs> love that. Yeah. Love that for us. Now, we don't have to go into this, so shut me down if you don't. But we, we had talked yeah. a little bit about some of the journey that you took in terms of, we'll say, mental health. Are you, are yeah. you willing to go there at all? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of opening up to you about some stuff. And by the way, thank you for uh, for being there for me. And, I, and I'm, I'm curious, you know, it seems like you really spotted some problematic behavior in yourself and you took conscious steps to resolve that behavior. So yeah, take us through that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, as I told you, you know, I had a, a partner who was pretty terrible to me. Um, mm. We broke up in early I think I was 21 when we broke up and we'd been together about two and a half years um so still very young obviously um and through that relationship though I kind of identified that I was behaving in a lot of ways that I really didn't like um uh, you know behavior that I've seen in family members around me and Mm -hmm. that I could easily look at them and go that's a problem I don't like that like that's a negative thing they need to get help for that Um, so yeah, so through that relationship imploding and blowing up and being generally awful, um, yeah, I, I just, I identified a lot of really bad behaviors in myself. Um, it still took a really long time. You know, I moved away from home. I moved to a different city. Um, Mm -hmm. and I was, what what were some of these behaviors that you, that you spotted? Like just generally, I, I was very, very good at making myself the victim in everything mm. um really like it was just like you know i was never in the wrong I, I, I could never be in the wrong even when i knew i was i would never admit that i was in the wrong it was always the other person's fault they made me do that they made me behave that way um but yeah just and didn't really take any accountability for myself yeah you so you caught yourself you were like you're kind of reflecting and you're like wow there's a lot of instances where i've accused other people of making me doing things is that kind of how your thought process worked oh absolutely absolutely yeah anytime um i would have somebody say well you've hurt my feelings or you've upset me by doing this thing i would go oh well you know that's your fault because you did this or well, you know you did that to me first mm. and you know like i just kind of would always i would never go yeah. yeah you're right that was me i chose to do that and that was not okay regardless of what the other person's done Wow. I mean, that, that seems pretty amazing that you were able to spot that and then, and then you took action. So sorry, you were getting into it. So then you, you had to move to a new city. Oh yeah. So I I lived in a, I grew up in a small town, um, in, I grew up in Alice Springs, which is in the middle of Australia. Um, and you know, population of about 30,000 was born there, lived my whole life there. Um, and it's one of those small towns where, everyone knows everyone or their cousin or their mum or their aunt. So like you can never escape anything. Um, and I, I don't know, I just like all my friends had gone off to university. They'd all gone off and moved to different cities. So one of my sisters had moved um, to like Adelaide, which is where I live now. I'm, I'm happy to put that out. Um, and I kind of thought that moving would fix everything, um, mm-hmm. which obviously it didn't. <laughs> um, it, <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> uh, it, I feel like Danny yeah. knows that better than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> like it helped. It was a, it was definitely a good starting point. It definitely removed me from a lot of really toxic situations that I was in. Um, 
you know, a lot of friendships in quotation marks that fell apart almost immediately after I moved because obviously, obviously they were not healthy at all. Um, yeah, so I moved down here. I was really broke for a few years, um, so I wasn't really able to Relatable. do too much in like getting help. Um, I kind of was mm-hmm. just doing the surviving thing for a couple of years. Um, and then once I started getting some disposable income and I, it was just before I started seeing my current partner, we've been together about five years now. Um, I realized that like I was still exhibiting a lot of those behaviors that I had been working on, but not in any really good way or any quick way. Um, mm-hmm. and so, yeah, so I, I, um, had started working for the government at that time and they offered like really good um, programs where I could get like a lot of free counseling. So I just got myself into therapy essentially um, and took advantage of that. And I just really tried to work. I mean, I've been in and out of therapy since I was 14, thanks to anxiety. Um, But uh, yeah, I went in really focusing on this behavior and like really wanting to just be a better friend and a person like yeah yeah one of the things i love that you said that we were talking because you know first of all i, I like that you incorporated or, or, or rather that your life reflected this because like it is so hard even in the wonderful world of australia to get therapy um you know and there's this class element as well but but one of the things you told me i believe that you were like oh yeah i worked on my problems and it was no big deal it only took a year of two sessions a week is that what you said yeah that was that was when i really started to see good um results from like what was happening wow. yeah i was doing about two sessions a week for about 12 months mm-hmm. um and then at that point was when my therapist said but well, she was actually going on maternity leave as well but she said, look, I think that you can probably cut it down to once a month at most, um, probably even once every two months because, yeah, I was actually seeing results, which was nice. That's yeah, amazing. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. To me, it just, I kind of, it was something that it needed to be done. And so I kind of, it kind of just became like not a big deal because it was just another thing that needed to happen. You know, the same as like I have to get up every morning and I have to go to work. So it's not a big deal. Like that was, yeah. I understand it is, but if if that makes sense, yeah. (laughs) I love that. And I thank you so much for sharing that journey. You know, I mean, I'm very excited to start therapy again. Mm -hmm. And I have had the thought, like, maybe I should do twice a week because it just... I love I love what you just said too because it's like yeah twice a week is expensive but mm. you were in therapy for a year and saw results I mean that is incredibly fast yeah yeah um, I mean I, I was, I've lucked out to be honest as well um, I found like the perfect psychologist in the first like, go um, yeah I was wow. I was very very lucky and we just clicked um, we had like really similar outlooks on. Um, things that are important and so she was able to kind of understand where I was coming from with a lot of things so yeah yeah, it was it was a lot of luck but like yeah as as well as as the actual work that's That's amazing well thank you for sharing that story I hope everyone can take something away from that I know I have now we're going to do a quick little situation here AITA for getting upset about bridal shower gifts I just had my bridal shower near where my family lives on the East Coast. My fiance and I live all the way in Cali and prior to my bridal shower requested that any gift purchase with the exception of cash be sent to our address in California. Our registry contained all sorts of things, many fragile, wine, flutes, china, you get it. It seemed like a no brainer to politely ask if people could have their gifts shipped to us to avoid the hassle of opening things and having to pack them back up and ship them to the literal other side of the country. I even suggested that people wrap up a picture of the gift so I could open that instead. Well, the day came and I noticed I barely received any gifts at my house. I figured maybe a lot of people decided cash, most people, 40 total, decided to bring their gifts and had me open them in person. I was so upset, I wanted to cry. The whole time I was thinking I had two options, ship all these gifts back to Cali or return them all and then buy them again and send them to my address. Thing is, my flight left to go back home the day after my shower, so now I'm stuck waiting on my mother to return everything for me. She says it's hundreds of dollars to ship everything, so she's going to return it all to the companies they came from, and then I can rebuy everything. But she's not one to hustle with things that aren't about her and told me she'll get around to it. 
eventually. She mentioned I was overreacting and that people just want to see me open stuff. It just sucked to feel like people just wanted to see their actual gift get open at my shower. I didn't care how inconvenient it really was for me. I'm going to have to wait months to actually get to enjoy this stuff and purchase all the gifts over again with all my store credit. AITA for wanting people to send their shower gifts directly to me. Damn, this sucks. Mm -hmm. I, I'm... I feel like I got nothing here, guys, because what is the etiquette? I'm, I'm with OP, but this is the etiquette here. I, I don't know. I'm very at a loss. I'm glad you asked. I just mm-hmm. bought a bridal shower gift last night. The thing is, typically at a bridal shower, the point is to open gifts. And honestly, why? I don't know. I just feel like that's boring and nobody wants to watch it. <laughs> um, mm. So I can see, I can like sort of see where the family members went with there, or I could if they weren't pretty explicit about this thing, this note about having it shipped to them. I also right. feel like if anyone used their brain, they would be like, no, she can't put a, you know, take a glass wine decanter on the plane or something. Um, See, I guess though, my defense for these folks is that there's just so many of them. I mean, if this is such a blatant and heinous offense, then why did so many people fall into this trap? My guess is because I feel like bridal showers are more for like your family and also the bridal party. And when you're talking Mm. about like your mom and your aunts and whoever, Mm. they're more likely to sort of not do the new updated thing and just do the traditional thing. Mm. Yeah. What say you, Hannah? Well, I was going to say, so in Australia, we don't really do a separate bridal shower. We kind of just have like an all in one day that we call like a hen's day um, that usually like mums and aunts and grandmothers would be invited to like the daytime um, PG stuff. And then the nighttime stuff is the fun party where we go out and we have, I think you guys do the bachelorette stuff, but yeah, we tend to just smash it all into the one day. Um, Seems smarter. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it's like you're only getting pe- you. It's like I only have to deal with getting to this area one time, and I also yes. feel like it's got to be harder to do these foolish international bachelorette parties that we do if it's the same day as the bridal shower. Yes, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. We don't, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think definitely the culture is because it's you know the oldies. It's all the the mums and the aunts and the grandmothers and. All they want to do is watch you open the pretty gift that they've bought and be excited and happy. And uh, that's the kind of, I think that that's definitely their culture of how they get like um, the joy out of giving the gift. It's not about you having the gift. It's about like giving it to you, if that makes sense. That, that, that's what I always see yes. from, um, yeah, from the older generations. I feel like we've talked about that, Danny. Haven't we talked about like gift giving etiquette a lot? Mm. We have. I mean, I think weddings tend to be a special case for a lot of things. But, you know, I I do believe that if you're giving a gift generally, you know, you should just give the gift and you should want to make them happy, not Mm. like want to see them happy. That feels a little greedy. Um, And then it stops to really be a gift and starts to be a a weird kind of trade. Um, You know, in this case, like... I guess I I kind of keep coming back to... So, okay, so the flow of this is that these people saw what OP said. Mm -hmm. She said, ship it there. And then they thought, well, no, I'll just bring it to you. And the vast majority of them did that. So what I'm actually thinking is that they didn't do it as opposition, right? Like, they were just like, oh, well, I'm not the kind of person who ships a gift. I'm the kind of person who brings a gift. Yeah, I think as well, I find at least in my own family and my friends' families... I find when you say something to an aunt, a mother or a grandmother in regards to wedding stuff, um, you go, oh, this is what's happening. And they go, I'm the exception to that rule. Like oh, almost every yes. single time. <laughs> like, mm. yeah. yeah. So true. Yeah. And it's, it's not out of a place of um, like, they're not trying to be trouble. They're not trying to cause a problem. It's just, yeah, I think that everyone gets so excited about wedding stuff and all they want to do is be a part of it. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. I guess I feel like it's almost a selfishness to just to want to like stick to tradition more than yeah. you want to actually like give a thoughtful gift. Cause now it's like they've, I don't know what the, op- well, yeah, I guess now they've caused them a burden, which is the opposite of giving a gift. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's the thing. But I guess what's what's hard for me to call them assholes is like I kind of don't feel like they were. Like I agree that some of these people probably had that thought and there was a layer of entitlement or like the rules don't apply to me vibes. But I kind of just feel like they're like, oh, yeah, I'll just bring it. That's how I do weddings and – yeah, I, I don't think it's always a conscious thought that they think that they're an exception to the rule. I think it's just like a thing where they're like, oh, yeah, no, but like this will be really lovely. This will be great if I do this kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So mm. I'm almost ready to like just blame OP, not not in any kind of way to suggest that they're an asshole, but just that this was like poorly implemented so that people could understand like why even give them the option to where they could think this is possible. There is an edit. They wrote, this was an online registry on Zola Mm -hmm. where you can program your address for people to make it easier. All of these people change my address to theirs. See, this is annoying because I literally like, it is so fucking easy to buy things on people's registry these days. And you just, you click on the link, you buy their gift, it's automatically gonna ship it to them. It actually is more work to not do that. Yeah. And I feel like between that method and her explicitly stating that they did not want this, and also just using your fucking brain, then I can I can come for them, I think. Like, I think well-meaning, I think you can be well-meaning and still be the asshole because I don't know. Intent doesn't always matter into impact. Mm. Right. And I I feel like you guys have said before that, like, being declared the arsehole doesn't make you a bad person. It just means you've done something that is arsehole-ish. Right. I feel like the cumulative effect of, like, these 40 gifts and this whole nightmare (laughs) feels asshole-ish to me. And then then the mum displaying, like, classic mother behavior. (laughs) Yeah, I am ready to shift into calling them assholes because now that I know the mechanism here where people actively change OP's address to theirs, I even am ready mm. to come for Zola. That just simply should not be possible. That's what You build something so that the person gets what they want. But really the fact is Zola lets people do what they want and these people made the choice to ship it to themselves. And yeah, I think that does make them an asshole. That was not what OP wanted. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So it sounds like we all agree. Hmm. AITA for getting upset about bridal shower gifts. That is a big fat NTA. And the the gift givers are. Yeah. Yes. Especially because the bride didn't actually tell everybody that she was upset. So I think she handled that as well as she could. Yeah. She really did. Yeah. Yeah. I also feel like because this is presumably a family affair, like Hmm. I did this... um, yesterday like i don't know you can just like just ask your family text them like before you go rogue yeah just be like right. can i do this or no <laughs> yeah Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> let's wrap up on this hannah thank you so much for coming on hit us with a australian phrase that we won't understand i, I apologize it does contain swearing um let's do it uh it's it's okay the the phrase is well we're not here to fuck spiders what what the hell <laughs> Cancel Australia. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. It's great. I, I love it. It's, um, yeah, it basically just means, like, like we're not here to do something stupid. Like, this is what we're here for. Like, we're not here to fuck spiders. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> Aren't there, this. like, huge, huge spiders in Australia? Yeah, this is, like, a you... scary imagery for me. Yeah. Um, yes. But... Yes. We have some. We The snakes are scarier. But, yes, we do have a lot of really huge spiders over here. Most of the really big ones aren't venomous though or poisonous they are mm. better like there's huntsmen's that are your friends um i still don't like them i don't like the look of them but they're your friends they eat everything else all right yeah <laughs> i suppose i can intellectually deal with that i i don't think <laughs> if i was presented with one i would be able to deal no no they are <laughs> terrifying to look at <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> terrifying all right, well, let's not drag this on too much. I mean, we're not here to fuck spiders, folks. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. We welcome V to the call-in show. V, how is Chicago today? It's hot as balls. <laughs> uh, you hate to hear it. Now, yeah, V, it's everybody. so humid, so humid. V works at my favorite store in the whole world, PM Woodwind. <laughs> um, 
I've talked a little bit oh, before. Yeah. <laughs> PM Woodwind is, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the original Woodwind store, but I have discovered the convention that if you own a Woodwind store, there's only one way to name that bad boy. What you want to do is you want to take your first initial and then you want to take your last name initial. You want to smash those puppies together and throw Woodwind on the end. I have verified <laughs> this. There's at least two Woodwind stores, which is enough for me to declare it as universal law. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So V, I did commit. Um, I mean, you didn't even, you didn't even, you kind of pushed back on me apologizing, but um, I know your pronouns are um, flexible, I would say. He, she, or they all fly. That's right? Anything. Yeah, anything except anything. for it. Yeah. Except for it. But then I referred to you as a gal, and you said, um, you know, that that's not correct. And I had never, I didn't know that people could have nouns. I guess it follows axiomatically, but I just never had that thought. So, yeah, can you explain the nouns? Why, yeah, like, so why then if I can call you he, but then not a man or, or you know, she, but then not. Yeah. So what what is the logic there? So um, my nouns would be uh, human or person. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I that's what I I do have preferences. Um, so I say they're my preferred nouns. Um, you know, or if someone calls me a woman, I'll also like, I usually won't correct them. Um, but man, I will correct them because I don't, I feel like I just don't identify as much with a man because I don't have, like I have, I have a female body. So right, I don't right. have the experiences, like people don't perceive me as a man, you know, so. So mm -hmm. then... I had also used the phrase preferred pronouns and I, I kind of feel like I think I know where you're going with this, but yeah, you, you do describe your pronouns as preferred, but you're saying be careful with that. So, so yeah, why is that? Yeah. So I, I describe myself as gender apathetic, identifying as a gender. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I love that. It's literally, it's literally a thing. It's an umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's my deal. Um, but my pronouns, you know, people have, pronouns like my partner yeah. my partner Ren has pronouns as they um but I actually have I have preferences like you see what I'm saying yeah. like some people they apathetic. just are yeah because like if you're saying well these this is what you prefer then you're kind of invalidating well okay you prefer that but that doesn't mean I have to use it well it's like well mm -hmm. no it's not yeah. really the deal but for right, me right, it's right. like well I prefer it you know that right, makes sense right, right. Well, thank you for explaining I'm that. Because <laughs> you're apathetic. I mean, it's highly relatable. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm just generally apathetic um, and pathetic. So, you know, we've got a lot in common. <laughs> um, but thanks for explaining that. And, and I'm so excited. And by the way, uh, it was so cool because you brought Ren to one of our virtual happy hours. So yeah. um, that was awesome. Um, but yeah, and, and you know, you've also kind of talked a lot in the WhatsApp um, about the polycule, which is the word... <laughs> for yeah how i guess how would you describe it? the poly organization like how everyone links to everyone else yeah how would you describe it well um i guess it would depend on what quote unquote polycule you're in because like we call it a polycule i don't know another circle could call it just their poly circle or poly square mm -hmm, or okay. whatever um oh, is polycule, but that's, just, uh, you, that's your term that's not a general term I don't I don't know I'm sure it's used um, but like with this whole thing like this is all new we are pioneers of this thing we don't mm. we, we don't have set you know words for certain things so we just kind of use them and then eventually I feel like uh, enough people use the same word where it kind of gets normalized but right now we're kind of like in between <laughs> I like it it's like I molecule it. but polycule yeah yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What I was or like yep. we have a chat, we have a chat like on uh, Discord, the you know the app, and we call it the cutie cool. So oh, <laughs> you know, like fun. we Love just it. play on that. Yeah, that is so cute. we play on that. That's cute. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we got a situation here to talk about involving uh, the polyam lifestyle. This is another thing. I, I'm pretty sure you turned me on to this. We don't say poly because poly is already owned by Polynesian folks. Is that right? Yeah, so actually I was, uh, in preparation for today, I was going back to your episode with Max, another polyamorous yeah. person, and uh, he also told you that, so you must have forgotten, but I mean, it's not a, it's not a common thing. <laughs> it's not Headline, a common thing. Yeah. Like, 
even in the polyamorous community, like we slip up all the time. So like, you know, it, it, forgive yourself, but also like, yes, Polynesian <laughs> had poly first. So we're trying to, we're trying to go back to saying polyam. Got it. Got so that, it. that's the term. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling me the fuck out today. <laughs> I'm getting rocked out here. Good Lord. But no, I oh. love, and I think it's great because you are patient about it and calm and like, you know that I'm trying my best and, I, I do think, you know, that it's it's important to, you know, be be graceful about these things. So hats off because, you know, I, I think the way you approach it is very mature and likable, you know, and it makes me want to just try harder and nail it. That doesn't mean I'm going to nail it because I can be a moron <laughs> and forget whole things that I've been taught. But, um, yeah, hats off for your demeanor about it. Well, of course, like, I feel like that's that's really the way to go if we really want people to you know accept these ways like we have to realize where they're coming from like not everyone know like i didn't know polyamory existed until a few you know whatever five years ago and we just have to remember that people are coming like i even i had this conversation with my my polyamorous roommate um slash ex-girlfriend actually interesting situation um but yeah so we were talking about this uh you know the other day it's like uh i don't know i i lost my thought but well i do feel like zanny and i are probably going to talk about this on the main episode there's a good uh i'm forgetting the name of this scholar but she has this concept of like calling people out versus calling people in um, and call out yeah. culture. We know it's about public shaming. Calling in is really like, hey, um, here's what you did, and like this is why it's hurtful or not what you should possibly do. So that, to me, it seems kind of like you're getting at that, where if you want people to go outside of their comfort zone and try to like learn things that – or concepts maybe that they're not confronted with every day. It doesn't really serve anyone to just be like, I don't know, a douche about it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And like, uh, this is what I was, I remember my train of thought. This is what I was saying. Like someone is learning that polyamory is a thing like this second right now. So if I went up to them right now and said, you know, well, I am dating this person who also has a spouse who also has three other partners it's like they would be like what like what kind of sinful like you know what i mean like yeah. whatever right. wherever they're coming from it's like you can't just make them dive into the deep end if they don't even know how to swim love mm-hmm. that well put yeah wow but Best then on the other the side it, it does yeah thanks <laughs> uh but then on the other side it, it does get exhausting because then like i am guilty of like being like well like if you weren't so narrow minded you know i am guilty of that too and it's like because it does get exhausting having to to educate people all the time. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. But but yeah, like you, you just have to be gentle with yourself and gentle with, with others. Very Easier fair. said than done. <laughs> Very fair. Teach them how to swim before pushing them in the deep end, folks. Here we go. Yeah. AITA <laughs> for not wanting my dad slash uncle's polyam partners at my wedding. I, 27F, am getting married in a few months. My dad's side of the family has a very normalized multiple wife slash GF way of life. My grandfather had two women he called his wives in addition to my grandmother, his actual wife, and a girlfriend. Wow, so that's four. After my grandfather died in 2014, my grandmother came out and said that she'd never agreed to the relationship and had been trapped because she had my dad too young and was forced to marry my grandfather. My dad and his two younger brothers shunned her and cut contact after she said this. Wow. Oh my God. Brutal. About a year later, my mom said the same thing and filed for divorce. After they divorced, I ended up going no contact with my dad until he reached out to me in 2019 because he was diagnosed with lung cancer. We have since redeveloped a relationship, but I'm clear I have no interest in meeting his three quote unquote girlfriends. When we sent out wedding invites, we offered all the adults a single plus one option. There was no issue at the time that my dad called this week asking about how far our venue was from a specific road because he was struggling to find an Airbnb big enough for him and his brothers. I was confused because I assumed there'd be a max of six people and I knew several Airbnbs in the area of that size. He said he was bringing all three of his girlfriends. Uncle one was bringing his wife and his girlfriend and uncle two was bringing both his girlfriends as well. I calmly reminded him that he was only allowed a single plus one and I wasn't going to pay for four extra women. I'd never meant to drink and eat at my wedding. 
He said he thought plus one was a joke because he knew my mom was bringing her husband as well as her six-year-old and newborn, so he assumed he got three guests too. I said two oh children God. who I'm very close to and one of whom is my flower girl were completely different to four extra random women. He flipped his shit and accused me of discriminating against his lifestyle and siding with mom and holding a grudge about their divorce, AITA, for not letting him bring extra guests. Oh my God. Yeah. Rough. I just feel, as a non-polyamorous person, I just feel like this is so not what it's supposed to be. Like, consent is the whole thing. (laughs) Yes, communication, consent. Uh, This very much gives me, um, I mean, cycle of abuse, you know, vibes. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely not consensual polyamory, and that is, like you said, that's the whole thing about polyamory is, like, you really need communication to do it. Um, Everyone who is involved knows what's going on, and, like, you have to communicate to that to people. You have to set boundaries with your partner, with your um, metamor, which means your partner, your partner's partners. Mm. Um... Yeah, it's a it's a lot of well, communication. So this this is not this is not polyamory. This is something else. Yeah, I mean, I think we're all lined up, obviously, on you know the aspects of this that are non consensual are horrible, etc. Right. But I, I think we're going to be in a more interesting discussion if we do assume that the three girlfriends are consensual, uh, mm-hmm. because then I think the etiquette and kind of what I think is most interesting to discuss here is you know, AITA for not letting him bring these extra guests. Now, obviously, if they're not consensual, then they're low key hostages. And then that's like a totally different mm-hmm. animal. So I don't I don't really think that's going to be a productive route for us because that's just like something that's so fucked up. It's it's too much of a no brainer. I'm for more sure. cu- curious where you line up, you know, in terms of being invited to a wedding or not being invited, you know, so like suppose that one of your partners is invited to a wedding and they get just a plus one. How does that play out for you? And and are they obligated or, or what are your feelings there? Yeah, I guess it would it would really depend on the relationship of every honestly, the relationships of everyone involved. Um, mm-hmm. It is a lot of money to pay for more people. Uh, it's certainly not the same as bringing a six year old and a newborn who are her siblings, right? Her half siblings. Right, and we've definitely established yeah. before that uh, precedent, if I may, that you are allowed to ban children from your wedding. Like, and you might lose people when you do that. That's just being realistic because some people don't want to part with their two-year-old for you know a whole weekend or whatever it may be, and you can't hold that against them. But it, it's it's a fair thing to say no, no kiddos. Yeah, and ultimately it is her wedding, so she honestly can do whatever she wants. <laughs> I mean, you you're not, no one's entitled to any plus ones at a wedding, I feel like. You know? You are you say you're not entitled? I mean, listen, it's like a bride can give anyone any number of plus ones or not, you know? Like, I just kind of feel like if you do get a guest, that is a nice thing. If right. you're not married or engaged. Right. Ace at least at like a traditional, like, you know, heterosexual wedding. Right. Winker Bells writes, NTA, basically your father is being completely unreasonable. You decide who comes to your wedding, not him. Draw firm boundaries. I mean, I really liked, I, I think V, I think you really nailed this on the head right away. It, it really just depends, not really on polyamory, n- none of that. It really does come back to what are the relationships of these individuals? Because if it's just a plus one, I, and, I, and I'm curious where you, where if we line up here and like, let's just say a situation where most of the kind of monogamous or whatever the word is, uh, monoamorous, whatever, those people all get kind of plus ones. And then the polyamorous person also gets a plus one. Um, and in a situation where you don't know any of the polyam partners, it's sort of just up to whoever, up to them, whoever they want to bring it. And that feels very fair to me. Is, is that fair? Um, absolutely. I would say, I would say that's fair. Um, I I would say, you know, there could be a conversation, uh, early enough in advance where if you really want, you know, if you have two primary partners and they're, you know, or you're in a triad and you really want to bring that, that other plus 
you know, you want plus two, maybe you can contact them and be like, hey, is there any way I can do this? Maybe I can even help you with the cost or, or whatever. Like, that's reasonable, but they still, like, it's their wedding and they still, uh, you know, it's still valid for them to say no. I love that. And I, and I, I have to say, I think asking and saying I'm happy to pay for them is super reasonable. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that obligates them, but I just think it's it's really kind of internalizing that just that's just how weddings work. Every person you bring adds cost to the wedding. And so I, I really love that approach because it feels super non-imposing. It kind of sets you up for success. You still got to be ready for a no because, you know, it's just also more people and, and you know, guests ha- or, or sorry, venues have a certain capacity, et cetera. But that just feels like you're really properly kind of respecting the fact that this is a huge financial thing for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you can be like, hey, I have five partners. We can all chip in and get you like a kick ass hot tub or something for your wedding party, you know, like your wedding gift. <laughs> yeah. And maybe it makes yeah. up for it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, hey, I think it never hurts to ask once. I think asking once is fine. Yeah. And being like, hey, this is what it is. I, I think that's super reasonable. Beans McLean writes YTA, changing Beans my vote McLean. after thinking about it more. <laughs> You're inviting your mom's abuser to a day which should be one of great joy for her. Uh, oh, for inviting yeah. the dad at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, in fairness, I think dad, I think he is an abuser. I don't think there's any question there. But like, as you said, V, I think there is a cycle here and dad is potentially fucking Royal bombing this shit, pretending he has cancer oh. or like, you know, he's leveraging his, his disease. And in any case, it's like, he didn't want a relationship. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have cancer, please. You know, it's like, well, it's, yeah, it's really- that was a red flag to me for sure. Right. So I don't necessarily, I don't know if I can really come for OP on that note. Cause it's like, she's part of this toxic person and is her dad. Um, yeah, I guess I, I, I do feel like people like there's a sort of idealistic version of weddings where you're going to reconcile all your family, I don't know, drama and stuff. Right. So like, I hope OP actually like reads that comment because I think it's very illuminating, but I can see why you would think like, oh, and my dad's going to walk me down the aisle and there's just going to be this band aid over the past however many years. Another yeah, thing yeah. is, this is not the place to be meeting all of these new women. Like, yeah. this is at her wedding. You know, these are essentially strangers. Truth. Totally, totally. And yeah, I mean, I feel like I, it would I, be the same as like if, if like I don't know, Danny, if you were invited to my wedding and like you had just you were dating someone who I'd never met and I had a limit on the wedding and I was like, sorry, man, I can't give you a plus one, like. Cause I mean, that happens to people all the time. Like, well, it's even worse than that. It's like, hey, can I bring my six friends? Yeah, right. <laughs> who well, you've never met. Yes, truly. Yeah, it's can exactly say, like that. But can I bring my six partners? Like, that's ridiculous. That's that's a lot. Can I just say how the tables have turned? Where Sarah is making me go single to her wedding. I can't believe my life. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I think we're all lined up here because AATA for not wanting my dad's uncle's polyam partners at my wedding. I think we're lined up. Let's see. I'm saying not the asshole and the dad and the uncle are because I think they're acting in a very entitled way. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't. I do think that commenter like was onto something. And I think maybe OP should really think more critically about uh, her mom's feelings. But I'm not ready to go. <laughs> First of all, it could not be a YTA situation. And at minimum, we'd have to go ESH. But that that just feels like a gotcha moment that I don't really like. So I do. Jones I can. Gotcha. I think it's uh, NTA. I'm with you, and we do have an ad here. Um, PM Woodwind, yes, PM Woodwind, <laughs> Chicago's best woodwind store, started by. PM over 25 years ago with one basic thought in mind, quality. That's right, people. If you are looking for a classic sax, clarinet, flute, piccolo, oboe, bassoon, or a rare and collectible woodwind and you live in Chicago, contact V, okay? She will sell you the woodwind. Oh, oh anywhere. I ship the, I, I pack them personally and I will send them all <laughs> over the world. I'm not even kidding. We send them to Japan, China, oh, hell France, yeah. Argentina. Amazing. It's amazing. It's, yeah, it's awesome. There's no shop like this. There's no Ooh, shop like this. Look at our website. Good to know. Yeah, I'm looking at a saxophone here that costs ten grand, and it's oh, oh my god, that's no, that's nothing. After the ice <laughs> machine, you're gonna get that. 
No, I packed up a go. straight tenor saxophone today. A straight what? tenor. Oh. I mean, you're gonna have to break that down. We don't. Okay. Don't think we know so a tenor, means. you know how a saxophone is curvy? Yeah. It, it's a pretty big. It's one of the bigger ones, and they made it straight, so it's like as basically as tall as I am. Whoa. That's crazy. What does that do to like the sound? Like, why did they do that? Uh, I mean, they just did it for a novelty, honestly. Um, there's not really a rhyme or reason. Um, Love it. But it is nickel-plated, so it makes the sound a little bit warmer. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much it. But it looks that's like amazing. a huge soprano, if you've seen a soprano, the straight one. That's That Kenny cool. G plays. People know Kenny G. God. Love it. Well, V, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and thank you so much for, like, participating and being a part of our community. You brought so much insight and... We love to hear it, folks. And please join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash AITA pod. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. All right, thanks Bye. for having me. Bye. Absolutely. Bye.